So I don't think the Holy Spirit threw this in by accident. Jesus is being summoned to go to a house of a man whose daughter is at home dying and she is 12 years old. To the Hebrews, the number 12 was the number of government. While he's on his way there, he encounters crowds, a throng, and one woman who grabs the hem of his garment, who the Bible just happens to say, has been vexed with the plague of bleeding for 12 years. And with no coincidence in sight, what you've just seen is a woman who cannot bear children and a child who is dying. And they have both had the same amount of time in their story. The girl is dying and probably has been dying for 12 years. And now today, her spirit leaves her body, 12 years old. Simultaneously, a woman who for 12 years has been unable to bear children, has been bleeding, meets Jesus in the street, and has the end of her plague with an identity of daughterhood. From that moment on, that daughter is able to have a daughter. From that moment on, that woman who had no identity as a mother is now able to be a mother for the first time. And down the street at Jairus' house is a 12-year-old girl whose spirit is about to come back into her body. I believe that God is sending a message to Israel. Israel, who had been governed for so long by her works. And if he's talking to Israel, he's always talking to you. Because in Galatians, you are Abraham's seed as well. Israel, for so long, had been governed by her works. The book of Isaiah says that self-righteousness is like a leprous or a menstrual rag in our lives. Self-righteousness, all of our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, Isaiah said. So whenever you see the bleeding woman, you're seeing the results of self-righteousness. The attempt to fix myself. I'm going to try to fix myself through smarts, money, education, vacation, entertainment, church. Religion, I'm going to fix me. And as long as you are in the fix you business, the next generation is dying. Jairus' daughter is dying. And I believe that we, for too long, because self-righteousness has ruled our lives, we're killing the next generation from having any hope in Christ because all they're being raised on is a steady diet of how to get ahead in life, how to function in the world. How to get what's coming to them. How to get what they deserve. And because that's become our diet and our mantra, we're unable to birth a generation that's able to walk by faith and tear down the limits of Jesus, that, that we've placed on God and on Jesus. The moment that the issue of blood is cured in her, she's able to bear children. And not coincidentally, down the street, a child that same age is now... Brought back to life, the spirit of heaven comes down into the life of that child. And I believe the Holy Spirit is saying through this story that once we cure up the river of unrighteousness that's in our lives, once the church has an identity of sonship and really does realize they're part of the family, the next generation is going to have the spirit come back into their bodies. Our only hope for our kids, our only hope for the next generation in the church is a people who know that they belong to Jesus Christ. That I do not establish my self-worth based upon my works, but on what Jesus thinks of me. That I am the beloved. I am a son. I am a daughter. And I belong in the family. And all I ever had to do was tug on daddy's shirt. That's what Jesus says in the book of Luke about the dad who goes to bed with his kids and a friend knocks on the door and says, give me some bread because I got a, neighbor, a friend that's come over. And the man says, no. Come back, me and my kids are in bed. And the man keeps knocking. And the dad gets up and goes to the door and opens it and gives him bread. And he says, I'm going to give it to you, not because we're friends, but because you won't leave me alone. And we Christians for years read that story and said, just keep knocking and he'll get up. And we forgot that we are the children in the bed with daddy. Amen. All you ever had to do was just tug on the hem of his garment. And he would wake up. That's so important that we get that. Because otherwise we think that our lives are about how loud we can knock. This is why we feel like we've got to read enough and pray enough and fast enough and give enough and go enough. And all of that stuff I just said is awesome in the right context. And it's all terrible in the wrong context. Ter terrible? Reading our work? Terrible in the wrong context. 
Because if you're reading it or you're praying or you're fasting or you're giving or you're going in order to get from God forgiveness or favor or anointing, then you are asking God to deal with you based upon your performance. And it's an insult to the finished work of Jesus Christ to deal with you based on how good you are. Thank God you are not dealt with today based on your goodness, but you are dealt with based on his goodness.